But there's a couple things that you guys were given that you guys should know how to do. First of all, we have discussed how to find the zeros um, or how to find the solutions from here. If you guys remember, whenever you're signing the solutions, we're going to replace our y with 0. Right? So if I give you the task of finding the zeros, if we have the product of factors equal to 0, then we know the first thing we're going to do is apply the zero product property. Right? It's already factored. Right? It's in factored form. So we don't need to factor it. We just need to set them equal to 0 and then solve. Right? We can apply the zero product property. Does everybody see that? Yes? No? Yes. OK. So now we can go ahead and um, use my inverse operations to solve. Take the square root. So I have x plus 4 equals 0, minus 4, minus 4, x equals negative 4. Minus 1, minus 1, x equals negative 1. So those are the solutions, right? Those are the real solutions. And if you guys remember what we did talk about last class, period, when you have the real solutions, those represent the what? The zeros, which graphically, though, represent the x-intercepts, right? They are zeros. They are solutions. And they, the real zeros and solutions represent the x-intercepts. So we go to negative 1 and then negative, negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have these nice little points here. But there's something to graph this. There's two things that need to come into play. First of all was the multiplicity, right? And if you guys remember, we talked about multiplicity. And multiplicity was the power of our linear factors. Do you guys see how these are two linear factors? Our variable x is raised to the first power. Does everybody see that? So in the definition that we wrote down, these are linear factors. Well, you can see here, I have a multiplicity of 2. And here, I have a multiplicity of 1. Correct? This is what we covered last class period. So you can basically say that m is 2. And here, m is 1. Now, in your notes, what we talked about was that the multiplicity, if the multiplicity is even, that means the graph bounces at the 0, right? Or bounces at the x-intercept. So at negative 4, the graph is going to bounce. We don't know if it's going to bounce up or bounce down, but we know it's going to bounce. And at negative 1, we know that the graph is going to cross. We don't know how it's going to cross, but we know it's going to cross. Does everybody understand that? That was in your notes last class period for multiplicity, right? So yes? I am going to connect them. Now, here's the one thing, though, that we did not go over. We did not go over to connect them, though. We need to know how to connect them, right? We don't know how to connect them right now. So what I was hoping that you guys would be able to come to the thing is, to connect them, we need to understand what the m behavior is, particularly. So if you guys were to use the m behavior, um, let's multiply this out, or let's try to do a, a quick little fact. If you guys were to do x, x plus 4 squared, we don't really, you don't need to know what x plus 4 squared is, but what is going to be the first, what is going to be the highest degree of x plus 4 times x plus 4? What is going to be the like, first term? x squared, right? We don't really need to know what x plus 4 um, squared is, but we know that the first term is x squared. Does everybody agree with me? And you guys can verify that by multiplying that out if you like. But I'm trying to save you a little bit of time and effort. Now, if I multiplied x squared, dot, 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 whatever it is, times x plus 1, what would be the highest degree of that polynomial, of the product of those? Well, what happens when you multiply x squared times x? You get what? You get x cubed, right? Is there going to be any other multiplication in there that's going to give you something higher than x cubed? No. So therefore, you guys can reason that the highest the highest uh, degree or, or power of the product of x plus 4 squared times x plus 1 is x plus 3. Correct? So now, not only is it x plus 3, but x squared times x is going to give you a positive, positive x cubed. So therefore, we now need to reason, all right, so we have an odd n behavior, right? So now we need to go back to 5-1 and say, all right, well, what happens when our n behavior is odd and our leading coefficient is positive? Hopefully you guys remember that when it's odd and or sorry, when it's odd and positive, the graph falls left and rises right. That's in your 5-1 notes as far as determining the end behavior. Okay? So now, do I have enough information that I can connect? Yeah, well, I can go up here. It's gonna bounce, it's gonna come back down, then it needs to go through here, and it looks something like that. 
Like I'm just connecting them. So you guys see how this graph looks now? Does that make sense? Do you guys want to try another one? <laughs> 